and we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. This is Community Matters. We're talking to Representative Ed Case about the implications of the attack on the U.S. Postal Service. Welcome to the show, Ed. It's so nice to have you here. Aloha. Good to be back with you, Jay, and all of your viewers. I really appreciate the opportunity. Now, it's an important moment, I think. Uh, as uh, President Obama said, um, this uh, attack on the post office is an existential existential threat to our democracy. And I, I know a lot of people who feel that way. Um, how do you feel about it? I think it's an attack on our democracy. <laughs> let me let me um, let me step back and give some context. Of course, <clears throat> the US Postal Service is a part of integral and institution in all of our lives uh, across the board, economic, uh, social, political, um, as as we can get the US Postal Service <clears throat> predates our country. Uh, the U.S. Postal Service is one of the very, very few federal institutions that's actually in our Constitution as a postal uh, delivery service. The founders understood uh, why it was so important to maintain communication uh, throughout our country, and the Postal Service has been doing that job ever since, and it has been key to the successes of our country. It has been key to the, to the, to the integration of our country, and it has been key to the, the elections that we run to choose our leaders in this country, and it's been key to the direction of our country. Uh, and so um, it is important to start with, and by the way, let's focus right here in our Hawaii, where we have a major US Postal Service, about 2,500 incredible employees across our entire state, uh, serving our entire state uh, from, from urban post offices uh, in, in my district, the first congressional district, uh, but when you get over the second congressional district uh, where that I used to represent 02 to 07, uh, you have rural post offices that are virtually the only tie between those communities and the outside world. And so there is a critical uh, uh, need for the Postal Service even before we got to, got to, the, to the craziness, really, if I can put it that way, of uh, 2020 and COVID-19. And so take that basic stability, that basic function of, a, of an institution that has the highest rating of any uh, government institution across our entire country, we all understand the importance of the Postal Service. Uh, not only do we understand it from a, from, a, from a logical perspective, but it's part of our lives. Our postal carriers are part of our lives. They keep us connected. Uh, they let us vote. Uh, and, and, and so this is an institution uh, that should be an assumed uh, rock of stability as we go through an incredible crisis. And yet, a um, couple of things have happened uh, this year, 2020. First of all, of course, COVID-19 has only accelerated the importance of the U.S. Postal Service because other means of communication and other means of contact are simply not available. Uh, and so you have to rely on the Postal Service much more to just move things around uh, our country. And that's really, really critical to whole areas. Uh, for example, our veterans who, de who depend, uh, who, who really uh, you know, are not supposed to be going into pharmacies quite as much to get their uh, 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 prescription prescribed medicine. The U.S. Postal Service takes care of most of those folks. Uh, Social Security, uh, um, U.S. Postal Service handles a great amount of the Social Security uh, Department's uh, workload. Um, so this is an across the board uh, need uh, that has been seriously impacted by COVID-19. Uh, and so it's more necessary than ever that the Postal Service be fully functioning. And then let's add voting. Uh, to the equation. Um, I don't think any of us would disagree, regardless of whether we, you know, which presidential candidate we support or which local candidate we support. Um, I don't think any of us would disagree, you know, regardless of the policy direction we want to take in this country, that we at, are at a critical election, a generational election, if I can really put it in, in those terms, a generational choice uh, in the direction of our country. And I think and hope uh, that most of us as Americans, regardless of our political affiliation, would agree that that choice should be made by as many Americans as humanly possible. That a, an election should represent, truly represent uh, all Americans uh, and, and they should and we should participate in that election so that the, so that the choices we make are credible, are known to be the representation of America, the mainstream of America. Uh, and the reality is um, that even before um, COVID-19 came along, voting by mail was becoming uh, quickly the pre preferred uh, choice uh, for um, voting. Um, we're not the first here in Hawaii. There are, there are other states, other jurisdictions that have been doing exclusively vote by mail 
for a long, long time now. Uh, but we are some, one of the first that has done it so incredibly uh, well, as we just saw in our primary election. Huge increase in voter turnout, historical, the largest voter turnout in the history of our state. Um, virtually no claims of fraud, no contested elections. It works, it works. Uh, and so as we, as, we, as we take that basic premise and expand it into a COVID-19 world uh, where no American should have to uh, be, be uh, asked to make the choice between his or her own health and voting by being forced uh, to vote in person when an alternative exists that is easy, convenient, uh, fraud protected, uh, and protects his or her personal health. Well, we should try to do that as much as we possibly can. And that is the importance of, uh, of uh, voting by mail in a COVID-19 uh, environment. Many, many parts of our country are being forced to a much greater reliance on vote by mail because they were nowhere near as far along the road uh, to vote by mail as, as we are here. Here, we're going to take it for granted a little bit. But you take uh, some of the, uh, the jurisdictions on the mainland uh, that, that are not there. They have to vote by mail to have a credible election uh, this time around. Um, so. What has, what, what has happened with the post office? What has happened with this administration? What is, what is the, the, uh, what are the elements of the attack? Uh, and how well, effective have those elements been to undermine the post office? Well, I think, um, I think you know, first of all, we have to look at four or five or six uh, um, facts, um, um, positions, statements, um, actions by this administration, and then, uh, then add them up to ask what that all adds up to. Um, the first and foremost um, um, concern that I have is that the Board of Governors of the U.S. Postal Service. So the Postal Service is a quasi-government agency now. Um, it runs itself for the most part. Um, and it is run by a Board of Governors who make decisions on, on you know, uh, uh, service, income, expense, uh, budgets, uh, personnel. They run that show. And this Board of Governors is a bipartisan board. Uh, and if, at present, this Board of Governors have all been appointed uh, by President Trump. So it's Democrats and Republicans. And this Board of Governors, when COVID-19 hit, urged Congress and the administration to appropriate $25 billion in emergency assistance to assist the U.S. Postal Service to have a full functioning all the way through COVID-19 and the election. They recognized that this was critical. They recognized that COVID-19 on a variety of fronts uh, was going to impact the Postal Service's uh, financial situation. Uh, they recognized that they needed the help right now. And they also recognized how critical uh, voting by mail was going to be. So they asked for $25 billion. That has not been supported by the administration. In the U.S. House, we did support it. We passed it out three months ago now in our HEROES Act. It's pending over in the U.S. Senate right now. Um, you know, uh, it, is, it is critical to assure the full functioning of the US Postal Service. And that alone uh, would be uh, proof positive of, of a commitment uh, to the US Postal Service's full functioning. And frankly, the failure to support that $25 billion, uh, in my mind, uh, under the circumstances, can only be uh, viewed as a, a, a question about whether uh, folks actually want the US Postal Service to function uh, during this period. And then there have been a number of uh, decisions uh, by the uh, Postmaster General, the newly appointed Postmaster General, um, uh, to, to uh, for example, uh, decommission whole huge uh, mail sorting machines, uh, to, uh, to, to go after the, 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 the realization that, uh, that, our, that our mail carriers who are assigned routes and who are expected to deliver the mail timely on those routes, um, if they have overflows of mail, um, they are entitled to overtime. Uh, for that. And uh, the Postmaster General has gone after that and said, no, no, you can't do overtime. You come back and the mail gets delayed. Uh, we have also seen um, attempts uh, to, to um, uh, you know, um, um, take away service in other areas. For example, the whole idea that, that when it comes to uh, uh, mailing out uh, absentee mail ballots and returning them, that's considered first class mail. That goes faster. Um, Postmaster General went after that. There have been other occurrences that the Postmaster General has, 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 has proposed under the, under the explanation of, quote unquote, improving the U.S. Postal Service. Now, I think any government institution can stand to be improved. And the U.S. Postal Service is having a tough time in the big picture financially, was before 
2020 and will after 2020. Um, and so there are very difficult decisions to be made in the US Postal Service. Uh, and Congress, I believe, needs to participate with the Postal Service in making uh, those decisions and helping out to preserve a Postal Service. But when you're in the middle of a crisis, a crisis uh, that, that impedes uh, the ability of the Postal Service to deliver to start with critical uh, deliveries, and then you add to that the critical importance of vote by mail, um, that's no time to be walking through these kinds of major uh, reforms. You, you just got to get the job done, period. Um, and um, so you add all of that up and you ask, well, what does this all mean? And to me, what it means um, is either or both of a complete uh, lack of appreciation of the role of the US Postal Service in this crisis and in mail-in voting, or frankly, um, a voter suppression uh, approach uh, where there is a conscious uh, effort uh, to, to actually get less people to vote by mail than the maximum number of people to vote by mail. And I, you, I have you received uh, communications from your constituents uh, on their opinion on that question? My constituents are overwhelmingly supportive of the U.S. Postal Service. Um, I can say that in the last uh, 72 hours this week, um, I've probably gotten 3,000 uh, communications from my constituents, um, and I can I I think the I think the uh, I think the uh, percentage of constituents. Uh, who who believe that the U.S. Postal Service is under attack for the wrong reasons is somewhere in the range of 95% mm. plus. Um, now, um, that means to me uh, that this is a transcendent issue. These are not folks that all agree on, on, on who should be the next president. They don't all agree on which party has the better approach. Uh, but they all do understand uh, that the U.S. Postal Service is integral. And they, you know, they smell little monkey business here. Uh, and so, um, um, you know, I feel the same way. So I'm completely aligned <laughs> with my with my constituents on this. And I would also say that I think most Americans feel this way. Um, so I think that this is an issue that that many, many Americans, most Americans, I should say, throughout our country, feel the same way. And so I'm hoping uh, that uh, the the, um, the the sum total of the of the uh, the outrage, really, in many cases, over uh, a systematic attempt to kind of, uh, you know, handicap the U.S. Postal Service in a critical time for probably the wrong reasons um, is, is something that uh, most Americans recognize, and that will translate uh, into Congress. And, of course, we've seen the Postmaster General in the last 24 hours try to say that he is reversing course, although it's a completely insufficient um, answer. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like it's really going to change what he's already done. For example, he removed uh, some uh, 600 of these uh, sorting machines. They're offline, they're, uh, they're disabled. Um, it would really be hard to put Humpty back together again. And he hasn't even said that he would do that. I think all he said is, I won't do any more of that. Same thing with removing the blue boxes off the street. Uh, he's removed what hundreds, thousands of them across the country. And he said he won't do any more, but he won't return the ones he's taken away. So it, it really sounds like an empty promise, doesn't it? Well, it's exactly right. Um, what the Postmaster General said yesterday was that he would, quote unquote, suspend um, his actions. He did not say he would restore uh, what he's already done. And that's a major concern, uh, because as you, you asked me at the very beginning of this show, has damage already been done? Well, some damage has already been done. We have enough time uh, to undo that damage between now and when absentee voting starts. And by the way, uh, in many states in this country, absentee voting starts as soon as a couple of weeks from now. Um, it, it actually starts in September in, 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 in some states. And so time is of the essence. Uh, uh, and, and you're correct that um, uh, the Postmaster General, when directly asked by congressional leadership if he was uh, going to not just suspend what he was intending to do, but retroactively go back and correct what he already did, he completely stated very upfront, no, he does not intend to do that. And so that must come from um, a congressional that, that apparently, um, if the president is not going to step in and, and uh, instruct the postmaster general or strongly urge the postmaster general uh, to reverse course, uh, not only prospectively, but going back, uh, if that's not going to happen, um, uh, Congress has got to come in and, and, uh, and do that. 
And in fact, um, um, that's what we have already done, as I said, in the United States House. Uh, but we're going to come back again and um, this weekend and pass out um, a, a standalone U.S. Postal Service bill uh, that funds that $25 billion all over again and basically says we are going to revert across the board to the status quo as of January 1st of this year. So in other words, put those sorting machines back in place, put those mailboxes back on the street. Um, you know, the, post, the, the, the letter carriers need to get that mail out first class for for elections and if if they if they're overloaded on their routes have to work extra yes they do get paid overtime to get that done and that's what it that's what it's going to take and 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 our thought here is to some of the claims by 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 some of the senators and the president are well that whole reform effort um uh to fund the postal service um is wrapped up in a much much bigger uh, package of, of, of further emergency assistance uh, to the country uh, that, the, that the House passed out. We refer to that as the HEROES Act. And we passed that on May 15th, um, over three months ago. And for three months, it's been sitting in the Senate and the administration. It's under very active negotiation right now. I am very, very uh, you know, uh, disturbed that we haven't passed that yet because there's, of course, critical need uh, throughout our state and our country that the, the CARES Act funding is can no longer address because it's basically uh, been exhausted. Um, but the claim is, well, the Postal Service is just one part of this big negotiation. And so it's kind of, you know, held up by the larger, by the larger negotiations. And so we're gonna say, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not taking that. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna pass a standalone bill. It's gonna be clean, it's gonna be simple. And here it is. Are you, are you supportive or not? Uh, because if you're supportive, then pass the bill. The president signs it. Okay, we can undo most of the damage. If you're not supportive of this bill, then we have to assume uh, that you share the same overall purpose to essentially uh, handicap the U.S. Postal Service in a critical time. Well, the, the Senate has jammed up everything you've done uh, for the for the last three and a half years, really. Um, why would it change its mind now? Uh, do you think it's under such pressure by its constituents, their constituents, that they will relent on this? Because it, it seems to me there's a fair chance they'll, they'll pan it the way they pan everything from the House. Um, well, first of all, I don't, wanna, I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be the over the top in terms of <clears throat> kind of the everything uh, statement, <clears throat> because uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, we have worked uh, uh, with the Senate and the President um, to accomplish uh, some things uh, in the last couple of years, especially the last, uh, what has it been, uh, 19, 20 months since I've been back in office. Um, so for example, uh, we, um, we did pass the CARES Act uh, and the CARES Act was four separate pieces of legislation all collectively referred to as the CARES Act, but each one of those uh, pieces of legislation had to be negotiated out uh, in advance and then went through uh, quite easily. And we did manage to pull that off. So that shows that it's possible when you have a united purpose and when you have great need. Uh, we have also, uh, for example, uh, funded the federal government in the normal course. We passed out our appropriations bills uh, last year um, <clears throat> and uh, knock on wood, and I'm a member of that committee, the appropriations committee. <clears throat> we are on track uh, to do that again um, um, this year. So. Uh, and there have been other areas in which uh, uh, we have reached agreement, the Great American Outdoors Act, which was just passed uh, and signed into law just a few weeks ago. A revolutionary, uh, once in a generation uh, bill supporting our special places across the country. We got that done. So I don't want, I don't, I don't want to play this from a purely uh, partisan or, or extreme, you know, they never do anything new. I don't believe that. Um, and I believe, um, and perhaps I'm overly optimistic on it, but I do still believe uh, that um, individual senators, uh, primarily in the Republican Party, who are institutionally, at least, uh, the folks that are holding up um, the funding here, um, are hearing from their constituents. Uh, and I do believe that they understand that, that, look, we can disagree over even deeply, even uh, to the point of a of, 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 of very passionate, even angry debate on policy. That's the role of government. That's where we try to have those debates. We can disagree as parties. We can disagree as House versus the Senate. We can disagree as Congress versus the president. 
Um, and, um, you know, we can, we can all um, be judged, judge and be judged at the, at the, at the, at the voting booth um, um, every two years uh, or four years or six years, depending on your term. Um, and that's, that's democracy and that's all fine. But you have to have some basic foundations of your country that you leave alone uh, and that those foundations are what the rest of it rests on. And, and I, hope that, I hope that those senators who thus far have, have not taken public issue with the administration's uh, actions with respect to the US Postal Service have somehow tried to defend it as well. We're just trying to kind of reform a kind of a you know, broken institution, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I hope that um, they, uh, in their hearts, uh, come to the realization that there probably are uh, purposes for all of this action with the U.S. Postal Service that challenge that basic foundation of the right to vote. Uh, because, you know, we, we just lost John Lewis, my colleague, a couple of weeks back. He fought an entire lifetime over the right to vote. That was his mission, the right to vote. And to, and to think that and to think that, you know, after all of these uh, generations, all of these decades, we may still be seeing institutional voter suppression, but on a massive scale uh, from our federal government. Um, that should be completely unacceptable to any American, especially any U.S. United States senator. So I'm hopeful um, that the U.S. Senate will basically um, say to the president, look, you reverse course all the way around or we're just gonna agree with the house on this bill and send it to you. And then you're gonna to have to decide whether to veto it or not. And we're gonna to have to decide whether to override you. I hope it doesn't well, come yeah, back. That's another question. He could veto it even if the Senate agrees. Um, so let me ask you, and be, I'm being pessimistic here. Um, let's say the Senate doesn't agree or the Senate does agree. Uh, and you know we have a joint, joint agreement between the two houses and Trump vetoes it. Um, so we don't have the funding. Uh, we don't have the statement of support for the Postal Service. What happens then? Well, the Postal Service, uh, the Postal Service, of course, is is still is still ongoing, is still functioning, and the Postal Service is very used to to handling high volume spikes in in mail. Uh, for example, of course, they they handle our 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 holiday seasons mail every every December. Um, so, if you ask the Postal Service, they're going to say. Uh, they're very concerned by these actions, but they're going to do their best. And chances are uh, they will actually pull it off mostly. Um, but uh, take that uh, mostly and compare it against uh, mostly is not good enough uh, in, a, in the middle of a crisis. Uh, if somebody doesn't get their medicine, if somebody doesn't get their, their you know, social security materials or economic impact checks or you know, whatever it might be, or doesn't get to vote, uh, because they don't, they, their ballot doesn't get there in time, uh, and they feel unsafe going to the <clears throat> to the voting booth in person. That's not acceptable. So mostly is not good enough. Number one. <clears throat> number two, we're going to all have to um, obviously uh, um, adjust as much as possible uh, to avoid any of that consequence, and that's going to mean um, um, ballots are going to have to get out there faster. People are going to have to vote. You know, um, earlier there's going to be less margin of error if you don't if you don't follow the guidance on on how to actually make your vote count, uh, and that shouldn't be. It shouldn't be up to voters uh, to to you know be completely you know vigilant. Yes, of course we have that responsibility, but our job as government is to make it as easy as possible, and that's what's going to be missing uh, if we don't get this all uh, in place. Yeah, we have uh, several questions. Let me, uh, uh, I'm going to sort of uh, ask them all together and you can deal with them as a bunch. One, one um, question or one viewer says, what can we do to fix this? I think you've uh, already covered that in large part. Um, next question, this is really interesting. Uh, what can force uh, the joy to restore the sorting machines before the election? That, that's hard on a practical basis. And the third question is, um, uh, this is really interesting. Uh, will Louis DeJoy, Louis DeJoy, be charged for crimes and offenses uh, under the Constitution for having interfered with the mail? Any possibility of that? Um, what can we all do? Well, I think, <clears throat> you know, I think 
in Hawaii, I think the congressional delegation is pretty much on the same page with, with what I've said. I don't want to speak for my colleagues, but um, I've, I've certainly seen what, seen what they've said, and it's very consistent with what I've uh, said. So I think we, we're all you know, with the program, and we're all supportive of what I, what I talked about, the $25 billion emergency appropriation and restoring things to the status quo as of January 1st of this year. That's what we want. Um, so, you know, I welcome people uh, writing into me um, to to communicate or, or or letting them know of my views, and I will respond fully, and I am responding fully uh, as people write me, uh, including those people, by the way, that disagree with me. So I try to I try to explain the importance of this, and and many many that I do communicate with with uh, do do reconsider their position and try to view, and try to view it in a nonpartisan way. Um, but um, frankly, uh, uh, if folks really want to help, if you've got if you've got uh, you know friends and relatives that are that are in states that are represented by Republican senators in particular, uh, you should write them and make sure that they contact their their senators, uh, because that's direct grassroots uh, influence of the political process, and those senators listen to their own constituents, and that's where the decision is going to be made on this. Um, <clears throat> in terms of <clears throat> in terms of uh, kind of um, restoring the 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 equipment. Um, I, uh, I think that we have time to restore a fair bit of it. Um, so, you know, we don't have unlimited time. So one would hope that uh, both uh, the Postmaster General and the President would, would stand up today and say, no, we understand this is an emergency. We're gonna go out there and do it all. And these are the steps that we have to go through uh, in order to get that done. Um, in that case, we could probably remedy, as I said, you know, uh, most of the damage, um, but um, we'd have to start now to do that. And then in terms of charging the Postmaster General, I, I just don't know how to make a judgment on that. I mean, in all honesty, as I look at it today, um, I may disagree with him deeply on his actions and his policy, but I, I don't detect any um, you know, um, impeachable crit criminal contact, uh, conduct um, uh, actions. Now, I've been surprised before by administration officials who appeared to be you know, acting within the broad scope of discretion that they have as, as administration officials, when in fact, uh, when you started to dig under the surface, there was some uh, allegedly criminal conduct. Um, and by the way, the Postmaster General, of course, is subject to congressional oversight and has agreed uh, thus far to uh, come up to Congress uh, to answer, answer questions in official congressional oversight hearings, as he should. I would be much more concerned if he if he, like other administration officials, uh, was instructed by the president not to come to Congress uh, to explain uh, the administration's actions. But no, I don't see that quite yet. Well, there you are uh, in, in a situation which nobody would have anticipated. Um, and, and, and it seems to get worse every day and threaten our democracy all the more. And I just, uh, my last question, Ed, is how do you feel about that? You're a man of great character. We know that from your political career here in Hawaii, and we fully appreciate it, and we be, we're behind you. Um, but I just wonder how you feel about being in Congress now with all of these shenanigans going on. Um, deeply disappointed. Um, I, I, to go back to a, a point that I made earlier, um, I think that there is a, I think that there is a, you know, there is a zone uh, for reasonable um, compromise and agreement in our country um, that is um, available, but um, people are scared to use it nowadays uh, because somehow they think that this is such a deeply divided country that uh, the, the mere, the mere, um, um, the mere action to compromise is viewed as a, as a, as a, as a form of treachery uh, by, by party loyalists on both sides. I'm not going to excuse either party on this, by the way. Um, and so um, that zone of agreement is still there. It is still my dream that it be utilized uh, uh, much more, and I'm still uh, optimistic that, that we can do so in the right environment, a less poisoned environment, a less political environment. Um, and I am doing that in Congress, and I found many, many fellow travelers, by the way, who feel exactly as I do, uh, that there's so much in this country that, uh, that we can actually find some reasonable uh, uh, middle ground compromise solution, whether it be um, you know, immigration reform or, or, or you know, foreign policy or healthcare. These are the big issues of our time. And there are solutions uh, that, that would work for our country um, and that we could all 
uh, pursue. It wouldn't be easy, but uh, you know, uh, as we would devote ourselves to it and be given the be given the rope really by our constituents uh, to 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 try to arrive at those agreements, we could get those done. Number one. Number two, there's a zone um, of disagreement, policy disagreement, um, just two paths in the road, um, and you kind of have to choose one or the other. And Congress is is um, where that decision should be made, uh, and I'm very comfortable with that role. Uh, I don't I don't prefer uh, to be to be for it to come down to such a binary choice because again I think that most most of these uh, decisions uh, there's a zone of agreement that 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 could be accomplished, but I have no problem with the great policy debate, and I have no problem with making that binary choice when I have to in representing my constituents. What bothers me the most about this situation, uh, the Postal Service is 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 the is really the 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 um, you know uh, exhibit number one to that, but it's not the only exhibit. Is a threat to the foundations of democracy. All of all of what I talked about rests again. I'll say it again on a foundation, and we have a we have you know very rarely have we have we seen such threats to the foundation, uh, where questions are raised as to whether democracy itself works. Um, questions are raised as to as to whether the right to vote um, uh, should be uh, you know um, 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 maximized. And to me, that's the biggest danger that I see right now. That's the biggest disappointment. I have uh, going back to Congress because um, I want to assume those foundations and I want to protect those foundations and I want I, I, I cherish them and I think that um, without those foundations we're gonna we're gonna drift and so I want those foundations I want to have that debate I want to find those agreements and I want to vote one way or the other where that agreement is not possible but again the foundations are critical and that's where I think the US Postal Service um, um, situation that we find ourselves in. Um, that's why I say it's a threat to democracy. Ed Case, our congressman, we admire you. Um, you we we, um, we <coughs> respect and appreciate your work on behalf of Hawaii, uh, and we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you so much for having me. Any contact from anybody, case.house.gov. Happy to answer your questions, hear your concerns, and your opinion. Appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Aloha. Aloha.